Welcome back. Let me just uh, remind you of our top story here in Al Jazeera that uh, Israeli forces and Palestinians have clashed in the uh, West Bank town of Ramallah uh, following an incursion by uh, Israeli forces there. We understand that uh, two people were killed uh, and a number of people injured uh, following the arrest of uh, an armed uh, Palestinian. Now, uh, we spoke to the chief Palestinian negotiator, Sai Barakat, earlier on, who strongly condemned the latest incursion into Ramallah. We condemn this incursion with the strongest possible terms, especially that it comes 10 days into the meeting between Abu Mazen and Mr. Olmert, in which we were supposed to have committees meeting in order to hand over areas and to maintain and sustain the cessation of violence between the two sides. I believe such incursions will only add to the fuel, will only undermine the efforts being exerted to restore uh, the trust relations between the two sides and to revive a meaningful peace process. And this also comes two hours before the meeting between President Mubarak and Mr. Olmert. And what, what would such things and occurrences do to such uh, meetings and such efforts uh, directed towards reviving the trust and reviving the peace process between the two sides? Sai Barakat talking to us earlier. Well, Al Jazeera's Rania Zabina joins me on the phone live uh, from Ramallah. Uh, Rania, we understand the Israelis have now withdrawn. What's the latest now? We've been seeing dramatic pictures of hundreds of Palestinians on the streets. Yes, actually, the Israeli jeep has just retreated. Uh, the incursion is over, uh, leaving behind at least uh, three to four Palestinian martyrs and uh, around 20 injured. Uh, we have been told that the Israeli army has arrested uh, four Palestinians, we don't know any names until the moment. The target were two people from the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. Uh, as you can see, people are gathering to assess the damage in the city center. Uh, the, I mean, as you say, um, you know, these are dramatic pictures following the incursion. Mm -hmm. The Israelis have now withdrawn. Uh, what's the sort of reaction now from people on the streets? Uh, people are extremely furious. Uh, we're talking about uh, four martyrs, which make uh, the Palestinian usual ordinary person very angry of this result. I think this uh, can be a, a reminder for Palestinian uh, to the present uh, and continuing occupation in the West Bank. Uh, maybe this is uh, the bell, so to speak. And of course, this comes at a very sensitive time uh, for events, particularly in Gaza, sure, uh, yeah. as uh, the two mm -hmm. sides, uh, Fatah and Hamas, uh, continue with rising tensions between the two. How do you think this incursion and today's activities uh, will impact on that? Uh, I think it's going to be um, a way to remind the Palestinians of the occupation. I think it's going to drive the Palestinians to a stage uh, that they should uh, conciliate uh, and put aside their internal differences no matter what and focus on the occupation, the continuing occupation on their land. Okay, Rania Zabina, thank you very much indeed. Welcome. Well, Israel's incursion into Ramallah comes as the latest round of talks aimed at finding a lasting peace deal between Israelis and Palestinians are set to begin in Egypt shortly. President Hosni Mubarak will meet with Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert in the Egyptian Red Sea resort of Sharm El Sheikh. Well, Al Jazeera's Hashem al Bara, who's been following the preparations, joins us live uh, from there. Hashem, since we last spoke to you, uh, the Israelis have now withdrawn. Uh, but what do you think the impact of that incursion will be on those talks there at Sharm el-Sheikh? Well, uh, Julian, uh, throughout the day there was a groundswell of optimism that the Gilad Shalit deal could be wrapped up and then that would be the first step toward more of a confidence building measure. But it seems that that groundswell of optimism is shrinking now with the news of the Israeli incursions into uh, Ramallah. The Egyptian diplomacy now has to put more pressure on both the Israelis to withdraw from Ramallah and at the same time the Palestinians to uh, restrain uh, themselves. The Egyptian diplomacy now is directing its vehicle towards three fronts. The international one, where they want to go to heavyweight actors in this part, in, uh, namely the United States of America and the EU, for more of a financial and political support for any permanent peace deal agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. At the Israeli side, they want the Israeli to lower some of the demands and respond and be receptive to uh, demands of the Palestinians in exchange of more aggressive Egyptian role like policing the territories, uh, monitoring the violations of the, uh, uh, of the ceasefire, at the same time the smuggling into uh, Gaza uh, Strip. 
but it seems that the idea of a deal that could uh, result in a knock-on effects into more global perspective uh, is dealt a blow at least temporarily with the news of the incursions which means that the Egyptian diplomacy and particularly President Mubarak will have to talk today uh, this evening to Prime Minister Ormond at the same time Mahmoud Abbas to try to tell them you have a chance and you don't need to waste that chance. Um, we know that the uh, the prisoner deal uh, was high on the agenda. Where does that now leave the deal? Are we, are we back to square one with the prisoner exchange deal? There was a lot of speculations until yesterday when the uh, Al-Ahram newspaper uh, quoted a senior official who said that we have no idea about the developments. And today I spoke with uh, Ambassador Suleiman Awad, the spokesperson of the presidency, and said, and he described, quotes that there is a breakthrough as, um, uh, uh, as unfounded for the moment. But he said that we are doing our best and we left that story to the uh, security committees to deal with it but that's just the small picture you have to look at the uh, big picture which is this is just going to be the first step the second step is very difficult because it has to do with the very complexities of the re political reality in the Middle East and bring in two sides who have been at loggerheads over everything to come up and say the, that the, the, the first step was part of the past. Now we need to tackle the most serious issues like the settlements, like the uh, status of Jerusalem and the final uh, status uh, agreements, which require not only international support, but a willingness among the Israelis and the Palestinians to realize that this is going to be very important for the future of both nations. But now with the incursions, you get more tensions and tensions, and we have to wait for the reactions of Palestinian factions before we can get any sense of uh, uh, situation and uh, development of the situation in the future. All right, Hashem al Bayra live there at Sharm el-Sheikh. Thank you very much indeed. And there's more violence between Palestinian factions Hamas and Fatah on the streets of Gaza, with several people wounded at the funerals of three Fatah supporters killed on Wednesday. Well, for the latest, let's go live now to Gaza and join Al Jazeera's Noor Oday. Noor, what's the latest there? Well, the latest is that over the hours of the evening, uh, two Palestinians have been killed in the northern Gaza Strip. One, uh, a security officer of the executive force formed by the interior minister and uh, uh, allied with Hamas, this is how it is known, and also a uh, Fatah. A member uh, was killed. Uh, 15 uh, people were injured in the northern Gaza Strip in clashes that erupted over the evening hours. Uh, six people had been injured earlier in the day during the funeral procession of three Fatah members and who are also members of the preventative security uh, force. They were killed uh, last night in Khan Yunus. Uh, Noor, uh, there's a very shaky ceasefire uh, between Hamas and Fatah at the moment. Where does, uh, where does this latest violence leave that ceasefire? Well, it leaves it crawling at the moment and, and, and uh, trying to find any chance of uh, reviving itself. All the Palestinian factions that we've spoken to, as well as spokespersons for Hamas and Fatah, say that they're committed to this ceasefire. Fatah has said, has said that uh, uh, given all these infractions as it sees them uh, committed by Hamas again in the view of Fatah, that there, there isn't really a ceasefire. Uh, we, we had uh, five people killed yesterday, two today. Uh, bringing it to seven, uh, bringing the number to seven. Fatah for its part, uh, Hamas for its part, has said that elements, rogue elements, as it calls them in Fatah, are behind all these incidents. So at the moment, there's a question of where the political will uh, it lies uh, uh, in terms of wanting to bring the situation under control, control restore calm, and uh, uh, go to the point where talks can be resumed between Fatah and Hamas to form a government of national unity which is seen as the only way out for Palestinians out of these clashes out of this violence that has brought a lot of suffering to ordinary Palestinians especially in the Gaza Strip